to my channel guys thank you so much for stopping by i wanted to talk to you guys because i've been getting a lot of messages within my dms on instagram about uh what did i have in my hospital bag when i went to the hospital um so i wanted to give you guys a list of 10 different things that i personally think you should have in your hospital bag when you're delivering a baby um now this top 10 list uh, I actually did not bring with me to the hospital. Um, I did not bring everything here. So if I was to have another baby, it would definitely be um, these top 10 things I would definitely have in my bag this time. Because uh, I've learned, obviously, from the first child of what to bring, what not to bring. And me and my boyfriend clearly overpacked. So I just want to make sure that you know, when you guys are listening to this video that I'm keeping it very simple for you. So you could just have one bag for yourself and, you know, you'll be able to go and be ready for the baby. So the first thing on my list is a change of clothes for you and the baby. So when you leave in the hospital, um, you are going to um, have to have a change of clothes for the baby. The baby is mostly going to be wrapped in a swaddle for the most part, but the hospital swaddle. So you want to make sure you have that first outfit for the baby. Um, definitely a pair of socks. Shoes are not necessary. You can have pants. Uh, you know, it all depends on if it's winter, summer, when you're having your child. So um, definitely have a change of clothes for the baby and have a change of clothes for yourself. Now, when I did go to the hospital, my mom did advise me to have a dress. Now, I gave birth back in the springtime. She said I have a dress because it was easier just to put the dress on. Nothing's over my stomach. Nothing's hurting, you know, down there. And when I walk, you know, it's, it's an easy swift motion for me to move around and not be in so much pain or so uh tightly garmented like with tight pants on and everything like how i really wanted to do but i when i listened to her i completely understood what she said so if you can if you're delivering in the spring slash summer wear a dress in the winter time wear sweats on my list a pacifier now we when we first me and my boyfriend was talking about what we should bring for the baby we did we decided not to do a pacifier we were like oh you know we don't want her to get addicted to it and it's hard to get them off and everything like that but when she first came out the hospital and we were in we were in the hospital i realized i was like you know what i should have brought a pacifier for her because she wanted to suck on my breast constantly constantly and that was the only thing that would calm her down and make her go to sleep so next time i have a child i definitely want a pacifier for sure um so pacifier please please put on your list step number three nightgowns um you definitely want something like a nightgown within a dress form once again because you want to be free you're going to constantly go to the bathroom you're going to be bleeding and you want to make sure you have something that you can just hike up really quick to use the bathroom it's going to be painful the nurses do help you but you don't want something like shorts or uh sweatpants or anything like that while you're in the hospital itself definitely have a nightgown some slippers that helped me out tremendously so nightgowns step number four a stomach band. Now, the hospital does give you a stomach band because remember, your, your all your organs were out of place for nine months, so now they're coming back. So they do give you a stomach band to put around your stomach, um, but it's not that good. I, I personally didn't really like it, um, and I had my own, but I left it at home. So there is, I'm going to link it down below. There's a three uh, strip band that I used when I got home from the hospital. And I used it all the way up to the eight weeks. I should have used it longer than that personally. But um, I used it all the way up to the eight weeks. And it was extremely comfortable, extremely helpful. I have two friends um, that I sent it to them. And they used it for them. And um ended up working out very very fine so a definitely a stomach band or some people use a faha you can use that too but anything to construct and make sure your tummy your stomach is nice and tight so your organs can shift back together number five a toothbrush toothpaste body wash all the essentials is what you need mouthwash the hospital does not provide you with that so you definitely want to make sure you bring your own okay 
Step number six, prenatal vitamins. Now you definitely want to continue to take the prenatal vitamins. If you guys looked at my previous video for new moms, a top 10 tips for new moms, I did mention that you should continue to take your prenatal vitamins. So you want to bring them with you because you're going to be extremely stressed, extremely fatigued, and the vitamins help bring everything back to normal. And you know, that it definitely just helps you feel more comfortable. At least it did for me when I was taking it and everything. It worked out totally fine. So definitely continue to bring your prenatal vitamins. Step number seven, earphones and chargers. Now, you have a newborn baby, and if you're a first-time mom, you've never had a child before, you don't know what's going on, you don't know what to do, and the baby is constantly crying. So you want to make sure that the baby is in a quiet room. It's very, very quiet for the most part because the baby is used to quiet, you know, it's used to being inside your belly, and it's just now out, so they're hearing a lot at one time. So you want to make sure you bring earphones when you want to talk on the phone or if you want to listen to music to keep yourself entertained, watch TV. Um, inside my hospital, you can connect your earphones to the TV. And you can watch TV while the baby's sleeping. You know, that helped me out tremendously. Also, a charger. You want to make sure you have a phone charger with you. You don't know how long your labor is going to be. I, mine technically was about 14 hours. And um, my boyfriend, he brought his charger, but I didn't bring mine. And my phone was gonna, was was dying, dying, dying. I had to constantly keep charging it because everybody's calling you. What's going on? How did it, how how are things going? Uh, you're FaceTiming people, and FaceTime definitely takes up my phone. Um, so you definitely want to make sure you have your charger with. Uh, next thing, hair ties and um, head scarves. So if you are a African-American woman or a woman of color, um, mostly your hair should be in braids. In braids, twists, anything, so you can tie it up and put it away. You do not want, you know, I'm, I am a natural. I'm here for naturals. But you do not want your fro during labor. You're going to be sweating. It is going to go from curly to, to froey. It's going to get knotty. You're not going to want to do your hair. You're going to want to do something extremely, extremely simple where you could just have this in, put it up, and you're good to go. Just keep it very, very simple for yourself. Make sure your hair is done. And you can have a hair tie. You could put a head scarf on when you go to sleep just to make sure that you're comfortable during labor process because labor is a whole nother thing and you do not want um on top of labor to worry about your hair <laughs> at least i didn't so braids twists anything like that hair ties head scarves put them on and use them step number nine pads now the hospital does give you pads they give you hospital pads and you're going to be bleeding and you're going to be bleeding a lot it's not necessarily your period but you will be bleeding from the pregnancy so it is extremely important that you do have pads now i did i did bring my own pads you might feel comfortable with the ones that you have you might want to get like overnight pads or something that is really thick that you can use um, but the hospital, like I said, they do provide it for you. If you don't mind using the hospitals, that's fine. But if you want to bring your own so you can feel more comfortable, you know, like how they are and how they absorb and everything like that, bring your own pads. It is extremely important. Um, because it's just, it's more of a comfortability thing compared to, you know, not having anything at all. Cause like I said, the hospital does provide you with things. And step number 10 nursing bras now if you are going to be breastfeeding if you're going to be breastfeeding out of you know the womb you definitely want to have nursing bras i was breastfeeding i did not think that i could actually breastfeed um and come to find out i could so i did not have any nursing bras at all and um you definitely want to have some because it's just so simple to just take them down and put the baby on your breast you're not going to want you're not going to be pumping and everything like that right in the hospital you're going to want to do um you know a breast to baby because that's like a form of bond that you get with the child so you're going to be doing that the entire time so bring some bras with you that you feel comfortable in that can help you because your breasts are going to be enlarged and gory and you're going to be spilling out milk left and right so nursing bras definitely help me as well
Now, that's the end of my list, but you guys, you know, you're probably thinking, wait, um, you know, I don't need uh, pampers, I don't need formula, I don't need nothing. The hospital provides you with literally everything when it comes down to your baby. They provide every single thing. You know, I, I did bring, uh, you know, baby wash. I bought uh, hair brushes because um, I thought when the baby come out, I'm going to have to wash the baby. Um, I did bring diapers. I brought so much unnecessary things when the hospital had every single thing there for you. As soon as the baby comes out, they take the baby away. They wash the baby. They put clothes on the baby. You don't need swaddles. They provide you with swaddles. You don't need diapers. They provide you with diapers. You don't need formula. They provide you with formula. You can even take items home. They're going to give you like to-go bags. and I, I mean, we had so many diapers the first time that I think it was the first month that my daughter was born she didn't need any diapers because we were still using the ones from the hospital she didn't need any um soap because we were still using the soap from the hospital she didn't need any swaddles because we we had the swaddles and the blankets that they gave us in the hospital so you're gonna go home with a lot of things so you might want to have a empty bag to fill up all the things that the hospital is going to provide you with and i'm telling you do not stress yourself out keep it bare minimum use this list to help you uh, figure out what you need, especially if you're a new time mom, you know, and it's, it's going to work out fine for you. Just remember you're giving birth. This is probably a new experience for you, or you've probably been through it. This is, could be a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eighth, nine time. So, <laughs> so, you know, it, it just take it easy, focus on the delivery and bringing your beautiful, healthy baby into this world. Thank you so much, guys, for stopping by. I really love doing these mom's videos for you. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Leave a comment down below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm coming out with more mom videos, and I have another natural hair video coming out very soon. So I cannot wait for you guys to see the new content, and I'm just so glad you guys keep coming back to my channel. So thank you so much. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.